All right, Charlie Van here with LFA CEO, Ed Suarez. Ed, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great, how are you? Oh, pretty good, and, and thank you again for taking this time. And congrats again on 100 events with LFA. I had a chance to be there for LFA One here in Dallas, Texas at the Bomb Factory, Peterson versus Higo. I mean, still, what an amazing fight that was. How's the ride been, man? How's the ride between LFA One to now LFA 100? Oh, it's been great. I mean, we've been accomplishing everything we set out to do. Um, you know, like I said, the perfect story on um, the perfect story for LFA uh, 100 was, you know, having a guy like uh, Victor Altamirano who fought as an amateur on the LFA one card. And here he is a hundred events later um, being the main event and winning a world title um, on the LFA 100. So it's a really a cool story. And, and it's just kind of a testament to what we've been doing over the past four years. And what a title fight performance by him against Nate Smith, someone who decorated Olympic style wrestler. And just, I mean, between the striking and the grappling that uh, Victor displayed, I mean, that's so exciting. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It cut out there for a second. Yeah, yeah. Say? Just saying, uh, what a great flyweight title performance by Victor, mentioning him against 100%. Nate Smith. I mean, just th just looking at Nate Smith as an opponent and his background, you know, that Olympic style wrestling, and he was able to neutralize that. And so it's going to be exciting. A, 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 and, it, you know, he, that was definitely, a, 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 you know, one of his toughest opponents as of yet. So he definitely fought, uh, I would say, probably one of the better opponents he's faced uh, in his professional fight career. So, uh, you know, definitely uh, well-deserving of, of the flyweight championship. Now you come, of course, uh, originally from a fight management background. You've also been involved with uh, owning a clothing company. Between those uh, backgrounds, how has that helped you with um, fight promotion? And any advice do you have to an upcoming fight promoter who would eventually love to have their 100th event? Well, I mean, I think uh, every, all the different things I've done in my life has kind of led me to, to 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 where I am today. From even before my clothing line, the, the, I, I managed bands and 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 um, and it was a nightclub promoter. So I think from that standpoint, to managing a band to managing a fighter is very similar. Um, it's the same formula with slightly different variables. One's got to sell tickets or one's got to sell, put, they both have to put asses in seats. Mm -hmm. One's got to sell pay-per-views. The other's got to sell records, but it's a very similar formula. And then when you look at it from, uh, um, you know, the fight promotion, all the experience that I had from putting on events and, 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 and nightclubs. And then, and then you take in, you know, the experience from the apparel brand, the building a brand to, to the merchandising of our apparel of LFA. So there, you know, I think even though there have been a lot of different things I've done, I feel that they've all kind of went hand in hand in, in, in being in the position that I am today. So I'm very grateful. And the only advice, uh, that I give is, is that, you know, it's hard work. If it was easy, everybody would do it. I'm just very fortunate to love what I do. And um, I'm constantly working. I'm always working. I'd never really have time off. If I have my phone on me, I'm working. So it's just one of those things where um, people tend to see the end result and they don't see the journey to get there. And um, sometimes people tend to forget the, the hard times and the adversities you have to overcome. So you know, it's not really, um, it, it's just part of the gig, man. Everybody wants to do something they enjoy doing for their life. So I think that if that's what you want to do, it's going to be hard work and sacrifice. Now, I did not know you're a band manager. That's really cool. And and how yeah. intrigued are you by uh, a walkout music choices, seeing that you've come from that music yeah. background? <laughs> yeah, I think it's always very important. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, the other, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Brant Moore fought for us, <laughs> right? And his hairdo is crazy. And I and I told him, I said, hey, man, you, you're looking like old dirty bastard from the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> I said, you got to walk out. Uh, uh, you got to walk out to ODB. He goes, I like it. And sure enough, that night when he walked out, he walked out to, hey, dirty, baby, I got your money. You know, I'm just kind of like laughing. He, he fall. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I definitely think that, yeah. you know, the, 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 the fighter has to has to enjoy it. It has to be a song that does something to them. And, mm -hmm. and, and I definitely feel that it's a, a big part of uh, someone's persona or, or what gets them into the fight.
Well, I had Josh Quinlan on a month ago and he walked out to sabotage during his fight. I love Beastie right. Boys and I, I we rarely too. ever hear it, even in the UFC, rarely hear a Beastie Boys walkout. Why do you think that might be? Is it just because of the times? I feel it's very fitting. Like half of their tracks you could, could be a walkout song. I mean, a lot of them. Are. I think it's just different, different songs for, you know, different strokes <laughs> for different folks. You know, I mean, I think some people get motivated by different things. I think, uh, I, I think most likely... Um, myself, if I was a fighter and I was walking, I'd probably definitely walk out to some sort of hip hop for sure. Um, <laughs> who would you but, walk out uh, to? Like, who's your all time favorite artist or one that you could work well, out my, to? My all time, my all time favorite artist is Notorious B.I.G. Oh yeah. Like, Biggie Smalls is, is my favorite, but I, I don't know if, uh, w- w- what song it would be to walk out to. I would either walk out to, uh, you know, someone like that or like a red man and method man who's got like a very amped up, uh, music maybe even jay-z's got some songs uh i I think maybe something that probably was produced by dj premier uh because i just like the way i like his tracks he's probably one of my favorite producers i also you don't see as much run dmc um i remember uh pat barry walked out in his fight against mirko krokop uh to walk this way and it's like yes like just because so paying tribute to that old school 80s hip-hop because man almost all their trop tracks like king of rock it's tricky could be a walkout song oh for sure they can i mean there's so many great uh so many great artists and, and and so many uh so many great walkout songs, you know, it just depends where you're from, you know, uh, from, uh, from my hometown where I still live in the South Bay is a, a group called Pennywise. Oh uh, it's yeah. A punk yeah. rock group. Mm-hmm. And Pennywise, uh, you know, that, that their song Roham is definitely a very good walkout song. And it's always really cool to be sitting in the UFC. And I've seen once in a while, some fighters walk out to Broham and it's just always <laughs> very kind of hits a, you know, it, 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 it's really cool to see, especially when, you know, you grew up going to high school parties where Pennywise is playing and then all of a sudden they're this huge, super, you know, successful band from my hometown. And, you know, uh, I'm not, it's always really cool to see. Well, if you want a really quick walk outside in punk rock, minor threat, because I think half their songs are like 30 seconds. So you're going to have to yeah, sprint to that, yeah, you that sprint, case. Exactly. <laughs> you got to see. Yeah, it's got to be a show. It's got to be a quick walkout. <laughs> Who, who do you think between in, in in your LFA cards or even look at the UFC represents that punk style? It, coming back as a punk fan, who who do you think represents that in, in their presence, maybe their their persona a little bit, even if they don't have necessarily the complete style, but just in their attitude? You know, someone that when I think of a kind of a little bit of a punk rock kind of vibe to him is, has always been a Chris Lieben to me. Oh yeah, definitely. Chris Lieben was definitely uh, uh, that sort of. Uh, he kind of uh, incorporated that sort of a vibe, I would say. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw one that might not normally. You might look at him. It's like, oh yeah, that's punk rock. Michael Bisbing. I think Michael Bisbing. Yeah. He may not is have it- the the traditional style, but I mean, punk is you know obviously more attitude than anything. But he just to me is like that's a a punk rocker. Well, he walks out to the Clash. Too, yeah, I know. So I was gonna totally say totally fitting, <laughs> totally fitting, totally fitting for him. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, I, I think Michael Bisbing could do that too, and maybe even a Dan Hardy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he I definitely know, come out with that mohawk, and you know, I think Dan Hardy definitely incorporates that, uh, especially that British rock, uh, punk rock sort of vibe. Did, didn't he have a? I think a band management background. I know he was involved years Who ago. Did? Uh, Dan Hardy, didn't he have? Uh, I don't in, know. I, I, I thought sure. I thought I heard that. I, I could be wrong. It wouldn't surprise me because I know he loves music. And of course, he's walked yeah. out to the you know the Clash as well. And of uh, so I, I, I mean, I think you, any English fighter has to at least one time walk. You, out you do. It's it, it's a it's a must. At least one time you got to honor. You have to. Yeah. Do you see a big correlation between fighting and music? Um. Yeah, I, I think there's a there's a correlation between music and just about anything. Mm-hmm. That that is true. I mean, I feel like it kind of it, it all kind of correlates and and connects and for sure. And and those walkouts are so there's been so many memorable ones, you know, throughout oh, the 100%. years. One hundred percent. You know, just even you know the Anderson Silva ain't no mm-hmm. sunshine. I was just when thinking he walks that walks out to the run D- to the to the DMX version. It's just uh, you know, but Anderson's uh, when he walked out in uh, he, I, th- I think it was the uh, when he walked out to uh, when he fought uh, Rich Franklin for the first time, Dana picked the song and uh, and he walked out to uh, that song by Redman, Time for Some Action. Oh, yeah. 
and that was a great walk outside, you know, you know, and, and even the, even in the intro of it, you know, that right in the beginning of the song, he says, let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> and then he comes in rapping and it's, and it's kind of a, a perfect walkout song, Red Man. It's always interesting when a fighter is known by a song and then they just, they change their, their choice of song style. Do you think that could yeah. be like a little superstition that they keep it? the same or um I, you know i think every fighter is a little bit different you know anderson uh, his last victory inside the octagon uh anderson walked out to a, a song that his son made uh, oh, and he a, walked out to a, cool. his song his son made the song and uh and his last victory against uh, Derek brunson um in brooklyn he walked out to his son's song and as a matter of fact in that that year version of the video game um, I got his son's song inside the video game. So when you walk out to Anderson Silva in the video game, it's actually his son's song playing to it. That's awesome. I mean, that's got just for his son alone to, to yeah, have your totally song cool. on a pay-per-view main event walking out. Yeah, it wasn't a main oh, event. Oh, no, that main event. I'm sorry, a, not main event, but main but card. Main card. Totally, yeah, yeah. Totally, that was yeah. the uh, that was the uh, Thompson Woodley 2, wasn't it? Uh, main. Uh, I don't recall what the main event was, but I or do was that remember Holly? Because I, I think uh, Glo- uh, I think Glover fought on that card also, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't recall what the main event was. I, I really don't for some reason. Well, either way, it's so cool that you know your your song is on pay per view, yeah. and uh, that that's awesome. And now going back to LFA, um, we're a year, you know dealing with you know this pandemic and there was a big question mark you know what was going to happen to the sport as far as putting on events and then this past summer you guys were able to do that in kansas just talk about it um just that experience and have you guys come so far up till now and now you're going to be in oklahoma for your next uh, few uh, cards yeah so i mean back when the pandemic hit last uh, march right or right around this time it was <laughs> the ninth it's crazy yeah, we had a, we had our event on the sixth of uh march in dallas last year and Hmm. then and then the following week i was in uh uh, in in mohegan sun because pitbull was fighting and then uh and sure enough uh the the that's when the the whole you know the whole uh the whole situation started happening you know that that's when the whole close down and quarantine and, and lockdown started happening so um, yeah, you know, in middle of March till, uh, you know, I would say a good two to three weeks, we were kind of a list a little bit kind of freaked out a little bit, not sure what to do. Then, you know, the team got together and started figuring out, hey, what is it that we have to do to get it going? And we finally figured out to put a plan together that would would enable us to start putting shows on. And, you know, we did a couple of residencies. And the first thing we did is we went to uh, the Sanford, so Sioux Falls, South Dakota and produced uh, eight shows in 10 weeks there. Um, and we partnered up with Sanford Health, which was uh, an incredible partnership there, especially in the beginning, which uh, they were in the, you know, in the forefront of, uh, of being ahead of it all with, the, with uh, um, you know, setting, helping us set our protocols and everything in place to be able to put on safe events. And they were incredible partners. We were able to knock off uh, eight shows in 10 weeks. And then, um, and then we moved to Kansas and then we knocked out another uh, five shows there to finish off the year. Um, so we ended up doing last year in 2020, we were scheduled to do 20 shows. We ended up doing uh, 20. Uh, we ended up doing 17 shows instead of 20. And then this year we're scheduled to do uh, 24 shows. So um, as of right now, we've done four so far. We're going to do uh, six, uh, a three in March, three in April. Um, so we're, we're on track to, uh, do all of our shows, if not more this year. Well, and that's awesome. You know, going from not knowing what to now, you know, you're here in, in, in springtime and more shows to come. And was it a little weird at first? Not see, cause every, anytime I go to LFA cart, it is packed, you know, so much energy was a little yeah. weird at first, you know, not yeah, having- it, 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 it was a little weird at first, but, uh, uh, there, there's, there's some negative things to it, of course. Uh, but there's also a lot of positives too. Mm. So I, I think, um, you know, just taking, uh, each, each, uh, each step with stride and, and, and figuring it out, but yeah, it was a little weird, but at the end of the day, I'm just happy that we're able to provide live fights for people to watch, um, keeping these young and up and coming guys busy and active. 
Um, and, and that's what I'm excited about. You know, that I'm just blessed and very grateful that we've been able to keep working. And I remember when this first happened, uh, I was on the phone with Dana, we were talking about some other things and then something came up and I remember telling them, I'm said, Hey, Dana, I'm just waiting for you to kick, kick open the door and we're coming in after you. And that's exactly what we did. I mean, we were back, we were the second organization back. It was the UFC than us. And, um, and, and, and same this year, I mean, we've, uh, you know, I, I know Bellator is going to be uh, starting their their uh, mm -hmm. broadcast April 2nd. But by the time April 2nd comes around, we will have already produced. Uh, I believe we've already produced seven, seven shows. So oh, wow. we, we have already produced seven shows this year um, by the time they produce one. So I'm very happy. Like I said, I couldn't be prouder of our team. Um, everyone on our team is you know, we, we wouldn't be the, what we are today without our team. You know what I mean? It, we now, really wouldn't. Now with those Oklahoma shows, are there going to be limited capacity fans? Not, not in the beginning. That, <laughs> that is a potential uh, for the second, uh, our second month there. Uh, the first month, I think we're just going to be following strict protocols. Like what we did mm -hmm. kind of like how we did with Kansas, Yeah, Kansas, the first, uh, the first, three shows we did there, there were no fans. Then the last two shows, uh, we, um, there were a limited capacity. And then, and then the last few shows, uh, 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 this year, I believe the last two shows, uh, we had limited capacity. I think they did a 20 or 25% uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was nice to hear some voices and even, uh, with a few hundred through three, 400 people in there, it, it, it was nice to feel that energy again. Now, uh, is there any future plans or in the near future coming here, to, you know, here to Texas at all? Uh, have there been talks about that? I know some uh, things are opening I mean, up, of course, here, but. Yeah, we'd love to. Uh, we'd love to come back to Texas right now. It's just really a matter of, you know, uh, of, you know, we're just trying to find the right places for us yeah. to go. But uh, but yeah, definitely. I, I would love to come back to Dallas. Dallas has uh, always been a very good, uh, you know, it was uh a little bit of like a home away from home for us. It was where we did our first LFA and it, it's probably the, the, the location in, in Texas that we're most consistent with. You know, you've guys been here and you talk about the consistency here in, here in Dallas. Have you been able to find any of the, uh, some, some food spots? Do you get a chance to explore these, these towns, these cities uh, when you're there? Yeah, sometimes we do. Sometimes we do. I mean, there's, we, we've been a lot of, there's, there's always a lot of great good eating in texas so oh yeah, yeah dallas i mean there's a lot of good uh, you know where we stay downtown um there's so many great restaurants down there so there you're not you're never you're not going to go hungry in texas that's for sure no that is true and, and and you guys always are there at the bomb factory which is right up the street there in deep elm i mean uh, it's almost like so many cool your... restaurants and yeah there's so many cool things and it, it, yeah it's it, it's a great i love mm -hmm. dallas it's probably i'd have to say it's probably one of my my, my four more uh probably one of my favorite uh, cities in, in, in uh, Texas for sure. Oh, thank you. It's, it's growing. It's growing. A lot of people moving here too. And uh, yeah. uh, so, so much, so much to do. And, you know, I, I was talking recently to Adrian Giannis about just Texas MMA. And I know you've been around Texas MMA for a right. long time. There's such a huge rise now. Why do you feel like it took a little bit of time? And what do you think about it this moment? Well, yeah, I think that there's a lot of strong camps. I mean, I, I think probably one of the strongest camps in Texas, if not in the country, is, is Fortis MMA mm -hmm. out of Dallas there. Uh, Safe is just a, a great coach, great guy, great example. Um, and there's just so many. And then you got Saul down in uh, uh, down in the Houston area. And, and there's just so many, um, you know, obviously, uh, combat sports are big in Texas and, uh, and the gyms are, are, are opening up everywhere. So there is a big, a big, uh, a big, you know, a big, community of mixed martial arts in texas and that's what they're known for for sure well you just mentioned uh fortis ma we just saw kenny and Zuchuku with a big knockout this weekend totally. um when you're looking at just all the talent that has you've given a showcase a platform for through lfa uh do you still like to keep in contact with those fighters and just what's your thoughts on everybody i mean you've produced so many contenders now and um in the ufc Oh yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's why we do it, man. I, I think nothing makes me happier than to see the success of our alumni that come through the LFA. Um, and you're right, you know, safe has had so many of his, uh, uh, so many of his athletes come through the LFA and he's been an incredible partner for us to work with uh, when we're in the Dallas area. 
Um, and, and like I said, it, it, it's just uh, very, um, how to, I get very fulfilled by seeing that, you know, to know that, um, you know, when I look at these fighters, I look at them as a, if I was to look at them as a block wall of success and knowing that the LFA may have played a part in maybe one, two, three, four of those blocks in that wall of success, that's, I'm very grateful for that. And I, and it's very fulfilling to be able to play a part in their success. Well, and finally, before I let you go, I want to thank you again for taking your time. I did notice you have a nice artwork right behind you. Are you a big art fan? I do have a lot of art. <laughs> I, I do have a lot of art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one are you talking about? The, uh, uh, right the behind octopus. it. looks like an octopus. Yeah, yeah I've been yeah, watching. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I love art too. So, Yeah, yeah. We have, I have a lot of art uh, all over my uh, my office. Uh, I just love art. Yeah, and, and I've always very much been into graffiti and street art. So I have a lot of... Uh, really i have so much art i don't have enough wall space <laughs> how art, much art I would have... you say you have oh jesus Christ! <laughs> how many pieces of art yeah have pieces yeah pieces uh i would say like probably around 25 pieces oh wow yeah yeah i probably have 25 pieces of art from different artists you know um yeah, I have, I have a lot. I have, I, yeah, I have uh, some from like graffiti artists risk. Mm. I've got uh, a bunch from one of my, uh, a local artist here named Steve Frankel. His, his name's Stein. I've got some artwork from a New York artist named uh, uh, Rascal. Uh, like I said, Ke Kelly, which is his, his art name is risk risk rock. Um, I have a lot, a few, a few of his graffiti pieces. Um, uh, a, a, my, a buddy of mine named Mike Dietrich, who has a brand called uh, Van Ludwig. He, I've got a lot of his art pieces. Um, yeah, I, I'm definitely into art. Pre-COVID, did you go to many art shows when you had the chance to? Yeah, I like going to the art shows. So definitely when when they're available, especially you know now during this pandemic, they're not as often. But but uh, I, I loved going to art shows and just seeing uh, all, all the different uh, you know art. I, I like all kinds of art, from sculptures to everything. I just like checking it out. Is there anything uh, real quick that's different? And you, you talked about New York art, LA art. Is there any differential um, patterns there? Um, I, I don't know about that. I think there's more of a differentiation in, in the hip hop, you know, in well, music, that's very true. Because, East coast, West yeah, coast. Hip, hip hop, hip hop. Uh, you know, I personally was born and raised on the West coast, but I'm more of a East coast hip hop guy. You know, I, I like, I like, uh, I mean, I love some of the producers and some of the bands that came out of the the West Coast are mm -hmm. legendary. You know, the NWAs, the Ice Cubes, the yeah. Ice Ts, the uh, Dr. Dre's, the Snoops, those guys. But but me personally, I, I like more of that that East Coast sound. A lot of the sampling, a lot of that. So to me, I, I, I the artwork and 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 uh, and, and music, I, I feel there is a little bit of a difference, but I think less in in the East, uh, less in the in the in in the art uh than than in the music you know i mean I, I music i think there's a lot more uh differentiation in art i think you know you can have incredible graffiti mm -hmm. artists from the west coast and the east coast i did love the documentary on netflix that came out last april um it was um about a uh, cartoon the L uh, the la tattoo yeah, 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 artist totally, totally. and and, totally. and i have a tattoo for, i have a i have a tattoo from uh, oh you uh, do uh, that is yeah, a cartoon yeah, my arm, this arm right here, I have, uh, I have my, oh, wife that's so and awesome. my daughter's names and like a, kind of a LA. Yeah, I, I know who, Cart yeah, Cartoon did one of my uh, tattoos. That's legendary. And, and how, how long yeah. did that session take for you? Um, that session took, uh, I'd say about three and a half, four hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's and awesome. He free, and he free, he free handed everything. Oh, I just nice. kind of told him like kind of what I wanted. And I just said, I let him be an artist. And I said, I wanted to incorporate my wife's name, my daughter's names. And, and he just put it all together. He's awesome. He's an incredible artist and so much art and culture in Los Angeles. I'm very proud to be from Los Angeles. Well, I hope to be able to venture sometime out there. I love LA. I have friends in West Hollywood too, and right. I enjoy going out there and experiencing everything, especially the live music scene, love music. So I can't right. wait to be able to do that again live music yeah that's for sure yeah that hopefully sooner than later man hopefully yeah. by summertime we'll be back to some sort of normalcy well thank you again ed um anything you want to say before i let you go to your friends family fans 
Oh, man, I just thank you for the support and tuning in to LFA and, you know, just keep watching because we're, 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 we're only getting bigger. We're just getting started. Well, thank you again, Ed. You have a good rest of your day. You too. Thanks. Thanks.